My name is Tim Garcia. I'm based out of the East Coast, and I lead the efforts for, enter for uh, enterprise to leverage Google Maps platforms from a B2B perspective and really focus on making sure our customers are really enabled to give their end customers and consumers the best possible experience with uh, location intelligence. So as you know, we're living in a world that has been extremely disrupted in so many ways over the last year. And because of that disruption, there has been opportunity to not only recognize that the customer's journey is shifting, but us as businesses need to innovate to really surface our locations, our products and services, and really enable a customer experience that makes life easier for our customers. So based on some external research, we found out that 60% of consumers have changed their shopping habits and 80% intend to adopt new shopping behaviors post-pandemic. So now that we've made it this far in the, in the environment that we are in today with COVID and seeing some light at the end of the tunnel, we know that consumers are expecting businesses to adapt, especially the ones that are already established. You know, it's really unfortunate that for some retailers, including like big box chains, restaurants, and merchants couldn't really weather the storm. And we're feeling that pain locally and it's hitting us pretty hard. But for those businesses that have adapted or the new businesses that are opening recently, and I can think of a couple of my own town today, they're taking new technologies very seriously. And those technologies can come in the form of payment options to curbside pickup, predicting arrival times, on-demand delivery, um, even knowing the business hours of a location or a store or a merchant, which was really very static in nature for the longest time because business hours didn't really change that often. But now it's more dynamic and even more essential than it ever has been. So with that said, we can go to the next slide. What we found out is that based on some internal and external research, three drivers as to why you know, businesses are really adapting to consumer behaviors and essentially to drive consumer or drive customers back to their locations and really enhance the user journey of research, shopping, uh, purchasing of goods and services and adapting to the new consumer needs. So the three drivers. So the first is convenience, right? Is my store open? Is it nearby? Is it convenient, convenient for me to do the research up front? And 46% of shoppers search for product and service availability in a store before making a purchase decision. And then second is value. Do I find value with a product or service? And is that directly related to my time spent searching for details on that location or a location? So 74% of consumers search for store specific details. And that could be you know, locations that are nearby, the directions, the hours, the in-stock products prior to their visit. And then third is the availability of a product or service at a specific location. So 53% of consumers are in interested in allowing brands to use their location to improve the checkout experiences and enable you know, in-store pickup or delivery for that consumer, which has seen an exponential growth during this time. And with all these findings and, and what we know and really what we have always known is that location plays a major role in making sure that the customer has an amazing experience. The evolution of location intelligence and applications has been pretty phenomenal over the years. And I've been in, in this industry for about 16 years and each year it gets more and more compelling, but the pandemic has really heightened the importance of location really to the nth degree. And for instance, when, when you're looking at Google Maps from a consumer perspective on your phone or on your desktop, you're seeing a breadth and depth of location intelligence access to a billion active users across the world and that experience really needs to be transferred directly to the enterprise use case because that's what consumers want. And they want it, they want it from the retailers and the merchants and the restaurants that they frequent often. Um, and now before I, I pass it on to our, our esteemed uh, partner at Geo and back to Aaron, that the company that really enables solutions leveraging location intelligence um, using our Google Maps APIs for retailers, merchants, even for FinServe, FinTech, and many, many other verticals, I wanted to quickly point out uh, a BCG Boston Consulting Group report that was released in February. And we're really talking, and this report really underlines and talks about the location, how location unlocks value. Um, and that's exactly what AppGeo does as well. I would highly recommend to request this paper from AppGeo um, to get more insights because essentially BCG surveyed 500 executives in financial services, retail, logistics, and delivery, real estate, travel. And it really reveals the way geospatial data has changed in the way that, that we and they do business. So feel free to reach out to Aaron, to Jordan and their team, and we can share that findings with you. 
So with that said, I'll pass it back to Aaron um, and let you talk and let Aaron talk about the strategies for really optimizing delivery and pickup services with their solutions. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. I really appreciate you sharing those insights with our audience today. Uh, definitely do check out that BCG study as I think it shines a light on why it's so important to have those spatial capabilities in place, especially in this post-pandemic world that we are entering. <laughs> I'm crossing my fingers on that one, but we are almost there. You know, and from here, I want to take a look at five areas which we at AppGeo have thought about for a long time, you know, even before all this um, new normal stuff started. And we're going to walk you through some of the things that you can start implementing right now that will really up your game in the delivery and pickup department and even more. So moving on to number one, and that is making it easy to find your locations. Now this sounds trivial, but in a world where people tend to follow the path of least resistance, having an easy to find and navigate web presence when it comes to your mapping tools is incredibly important. So when I ask here, are you on the map? Chances are yes, but so is everybody else. And they have you know, tens of millions of businesses on Google and we want yours to stand out, be the one that people go to. Now, furthermore, people are expecting to be able to do more right from the map or the website or their phone, you know, click, book, buy, no fussing around. And that's the sort of experience that customers are now beginning to expect as the default. So we're gonna dive in a little bit more on how to achieve this. And I'm gonna look at each of these in a little bit more detail, but we're gonna begin at the top here, starting with a user location. So most people these days, they've got their phone on them all the time. I know I do. So that means they've got a GPS in their pocket all the time. And this wasn't the case, you know, five, 10 years ago, but it really is now. So when you're initiating that user experience of finding convenient locations for them to visit, you can put them at the center of the map and give them that personalized experience that's going to be so much appreciated versus having to start from scratch and zoom in from the whole country down. Right now, here's another way of doing this using autocomplete. Um, with autocomplete, we can prioritize a user's location, even without GPS, to show them the most relevant search results first. And that means when we start filling in our address, we're typing it in, we're getting, you know, in my case, the Binney Street here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and not one that's off in Kansas. You know, we prioritized that starting location and we've sped the whole process up and made it more likely to convert that traffic to a sale or a paying customer. Now let's keep going down this list. Um, and the next is taking advantage of the new store locator features that Google has rolled out uh, a few updates in this area. The one I really like personally, and I think is really powerful is this new map styling. So for the first time in recent years, what you can make your map do is stand out from the rest of the pack, have it fit your brand identity and start tailoring what are appearing on it. So like, let's look at what that looks like. On the left, you can see what many of you are gonna be familiar with, and that's that classic Google map. But if you look close, we also see a few extra things on here, like some landmarks, some other stores. There's even a climbing gym. It must know it's me because I've been there a couple of times. Now, maybe we want to draw all the attention to our own locations and leave that other stuff up. You know, in cartography, we learn that part of what makes a good map is what is not there, not just what we add. So that's all in addition to bringing in our own colors and unique look. So here on the right, you know, it might not seem like a big deal, but when you're creating that on-brand experience, it's really going to look amazing on your website. So on the right-hand side, we have everything nicely cleaned up. We just got the neighborhood names there. We got our stores there. We've got our custom styling. And this is something that AppGeo can help you get up and running because we have a bunch of people that love making maps. So here you go. Now, moving on, the last couple I want to get to real quick here, uh, doing more from the map. And that's having your customers start scheduling in-store interactions or booking appointments or even shopping right from the map. And as Tim mentioned, having those things like up-to-date hours is going to be more important than ever as we're starting that long-awaited reopening process. And lastly, think about tying your inventory data right into your map interface. So customers could, say, filter by what stores have the product that they want. That would be really great. So again, making that store level inventory data visible to customers, 
um, and scheduling those store specific appointments. Uh, really important features and we're seeing more and more businesses do this. Um, now, again, thinking about making it easy to find nearby locations, we've compiled a list of some of the APIs you're gonna to need to make this happen, along with that custom styling feature I mentioned. So we encourage you to reach out to us if you need help on any of these. Um, and we have a lot of map experts here who love playing around with this stuff, you know, including me. So that wraps up number one, making it easy to find nearby locations. We're gonna move on to number two, and that's offering buy online, pick up in store. Now, some of you might already be doing this for your business, but there are some new features on Google Maps that might help you make it even better. Buy online, pick up in store was by far the fastest growing area for e-commerce even before COVID-19. And we have some stats here that it was growing at five times the speed of overall e-commerce. That's pretty crazy. So to meet these changing consumer habits, we need to ramp up technology that we have in our business infrastructure. Now, furthermore, I want you to consider the statement above, and that's that 90% of shoppers surveyed say that high shipping fees and home delivery that takes longer than two days, remember that, will likely prevent them from completing a purchase online. So the benchmark has been set, people. It's no surprise that online sales have grown you know, year over year for what, the past 20 years? Um, but I believe the tables have started to turn again in favor of local, where not only are people looking to do more when it comes to shopping locally, you know, that's a big thing right now, but you have a unique value proposition in terms of being able to beat that two day time window by offering the convenience of online shopping with maybe same day pickup in that town. Um, you know, I can't think of anything better than going on my phone, ordering something, and then having it ready for me 20 minutes later, uh, and free, by the way. So the good news, you can do better. <laughs> you can suddenly compete uh, with those uh, other businesses have been uh, taken share for years. Uh, the tables have started to turn, I think. So looking at ways that you can up your game when it comes to this pickup concept, uh, number one is making checking out easy and fast. You know, there's things like Google Checkout, which are a real uh, game changer in that department. But sometimes you need people to fill out their information for the first time. And with autocomplete, your customers don't have to get all annoyed filling out a million different boxes on the site and then their billing address where you got to enter it a second time. Um, so with autocomplete, all that's going to be maybe a few keystrokes to get all the information. And you get the added reassurance that you have accurate data coming into your database, not a bunch of spelling mistakes or you know the zip codes with missing digits. <laughs> the next one on this list is providing a quick and easy way for customers to verify they know what location to pick up from. And with static maps from Google, you can embed a low cost map right onto the customer's email receipt where they need to come and pick up their purchase which is really helpful if you say have multiple locations in the same town or region. You know, imagine the annoyance someone would have if they drive all the way there and they're like, what are you talking about? We don't have any order for you. That's gonna frustrate the heck out of them. So having that extra layer of verification, putting a picture right on there of your store that they're gonna be coming to, we think is a great idea and a great use of these APIs. Um, and then lastly, you know, making that store level inventory data visible um, is really important. So the APIs that you're going to need to make this happen, uh, autocomplete is definitely big, static maps we've talked about, and then directions, as we've seen some implementations where you can even get an estimate of how far away your customers are from your store. That's going to help you prioritize in your packing department or getting those orders processed for pickup, you know, know who's two hours away and who's 15 minutes down the road. That's going to help you improve your processes by even knowing when the customer will get there. Now, Moving on to number three, and that is keep the customer satisfied. It's not just a 1969 Paul Simon B side. It is a way of life. Um, and I've added an extra thing in here. Your driver is satisfied because as your employers, employees, you know, they are part of your company and part of that experience for the customer. So how can we ensure both accurate and on-time delivery? You know, those are the two things that I think matter most in this day and age. Get your stuff to the right house, get the right package and have it be at the time they're expecting it. So we've made a list here for you. And number one is minimizing delivery errors. There are a few great ways we can do that within Google. 
um, starting with having the right address to begin with. And that's going to be our, you know, geocoding, our placement of pins on the map is bar none, but also some cool stuff like providing real time tracking. You know, that's a bit of a more advanced feature, but uh, if you have a fleet of vehicles with GPS, there's ways to show the customer exactly when that delivery is driving down their street. And I think that is pretty cool. Um, now, the other thing that is really powerful when it comes to routing with Google Maps is taking advantage of all that live traffic data. You know, Google has one of the most powerful engines for knowing, you know, where streets are closed, where there's traffic backups, where there's delays um, of anyone in the world because they have so many users on the Google Maps uh, consumer platform driving around with it in their cars, collecting that real-time data. Um, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. And lastly, giving your drivers a heads up with Street View for drop-off points. We've heard a lot of really interesting examples of this being implemented where they can visualize exactly you know, the right porch that they're dropping off on ahead of time. That's gonna speed up time in the field, uh, not only get them to the next delivery quicker, but avoid having to circle around the block and search for the right house for 20 minutes. Uh, pretty powerful stuff. Now, AppGeo is no stranger to these type of solutions as over the past year, we've developed two products in this exact routing and delivery space. And I wanna talk you through them really quick to give you a sense of what can be achieved on this platform, as well as where Google strengths have brought us to use their technology for some of this development. So today you're going to be seeing examples of Bring Food, which we made freely available for nonprofits who are responding to food insecurity across the country during this COVID pandemic. And also Routinize, which is a brand new application we're rolling out. It's a powerful commercial grade routing application for home delivery. And that's going to be for everybody else. So what we're looking at here is Bring Food. And again, this is the free version that we developed to help out those local nonprofit organizations. We start with a bunch of delivery locations and these could change every single day. And with Google Geocoder, we go from a spreadsheet of addresses to a view like this one in seconds where we have pins on the map. So from there, our organizations are able to generate routes and we're able to generate the best route for a given number of drivers to reach them all in the most efficient amount of time. So you can see here on the right-hand side, we have routes one through seven. That would be like seven different drivers. We're able to track things like the miles and the estimated time for each of them to do some load balancing if necessary, um, and really get a sense of what we're asking of each of these individuals. And we have all sorts of controls where we can go in and look at each of the stops and make sure everything's right. But the reality of the situation is we're able to go from that you know, spreadsheet of addresses, maybe collected from a Google form or from our list of customers and go to something you know, actionable like this, like the exact route that someone's gonna be driving in a very short amount of time. And going one step further, looking at one of those routes in detail, we see their five stops, it's all very clear and they're able to take advantage of Google Maps routing in the car on their phone, for example, to hit all those uh, five drop-off points turn by turn. Um, it's a great combination of technology. So where do we go from there? You know, Bring Food has been helping organizations really save time and speed up deliveries across the country. Um, largely working with a volunteer set of drivers, that's really important to get to the most number of people in the least amount of time. But for a commercial application, I want to introduce to you this application, Routinize, which we are rolling out very soon. And um, there is a beta program that we are now going to be signing people up for. So I'd be interested if any of you are curious about that, get in touch with us. We'll be offering a trial of the platform free of charge if um, you're willing to participate in some user feedback check-ins and maybe be part of one of these webinars in the future. So looking at Routinize, again, it's a even more advanced version of what you saw from Bring Food. Um, there's gonna be a Google interface in there for people to familiarize themselves with the routes. And uh, we also have some mobile components for that as well. And we're targeting to release this in Q2 of this year. So stay tuned. We're very excited about Routinize and you on this call are some of the very first to hear about it. So in summary for this third category, we're looking at the relevant APIs being geocoding, directions, street view, um, and then a couple more of this distance matrix and asset tracking. And for those in particular, I've highlighted as they're a little more complicated to implement and we'd love you to get in touch with us if you want some help. Um, so without further ado, moving on to number four, 
and that is simplifying your dispatch processes. Now, for some of you, what you're delivering is even more complex than your traditional deliveries. In some cases, we might be picking up and dropping off people or perhaps running a larger fleet and have a lot of B2B delivery type needs with tight timetables or a lot of information to keep track of. And in those cases where you're working from a dashboard type interface or want to be, there's some benefits here I'd like to quickly run through as well. So how can we make sense of all this and make our operations more efficient? Um, so first and foremost, one thing we can improve and monitor is safety. And that's a big one because we want to keep your employees safe out there. So, you know, being able to choose, not only choose the best route um, and manage changing conditions and needs, but monitor things like vehicle performance. And furthermore, we can track this performance to provide better estimates. You know, when it comes to miles traveled and delivery and driving around, time is money. And also, <laughs> time is gas. And with all the data Google has on roads, if there's some inefficiency in your uh, routes that's slowing down your operations, you might very well be able to identify it and correct it. Um, and lastly, having all your data in one place is so important. And whoever is running your dispatching or fleet management operations is really going to appreciate having access to all that information in one place without having to go on tons of different websites and tabs to get at it all. And for that, I'd like to show you an example of another application that AppGeo developed on Google technology um, where we were able to do this kind of dispatching uh, dashboard. Now this for the company in question used to be an entirely manual process back in the day. And after two years of AppGeo managing the product, uh, we've really transformed that legacy system where they're now all online and they can, in this case, they're doing student busing in the state of New York, they're able to have these very specific pickup times, drop up times, manage tons of different schools, have profiles for each of their uh, different customers, or in this case, students that they're picking up um, and manage all that from a web interface. Um, and you can see here what a little bit of what that looks like in action. We've linked up their database with even like contact information, phone numbers, um, to all these different end destinations. We're able to create these custom routes using our set of data, our personal data. Um, and in this case, they have over 11,000 passengers, over 2,000 vehicles. Um, so just to give you a sense of the scale that we're able to manage very efficiently here within Google Maps. Um, also adding things like search functionality, select uh, records and do all this in bulk. It's really sped up this group's time on the planning department. So again, when you're looking at dispatching, that maps JavaScript API is the center of your command console, really relevant. Uh, the roads API, we're, we're able to actually take vehicle paths traveled and match them up with a specific road database information. That's really cool. Also on the Google Maps platform. And of course, this one keeps coming up again and again, that uh, routes API, which has your directions and distance matrix, but also places search because if you're dropping off at other businesses, how nice is it to be able to use Google Place database to identify exactly the correct address for all sorts of businesses across the US. So moving on to our final tip, and this goes a little bit deeper. And if you see the icon there in the lower right hand corner, you might have a hint of where this is going. What if I'm looking for even more insights into my data? Or what if I have a lot of data? And if you're looking for both location and cloud services, there's really no better combination than Google Maps and Google Cloud. So how do these two technologies fit together? Well, the good news is if you're a customer of one, you have access to everything on the other. Um, and we help a lot of customers do just that. So the Google Cloud platform provides an extensive range of products for high performance infrastructure, scalable storage, and even machine learning. And what Google Maps platform provides is customer access to Google's data and content, you know, that address data, that business data, that routing and traffic data, and all the maps, and being able to combine that with all the powerful tools that are in Google Cloud. And this is a mantra that we've been applying in some of our work, this predict, prepare, and protect. Uh, I thought this can also apply to your data because in some cases, your data is one of your most valuable assets um, and being able to quickly compute and analyze and make decisions with large sets of data. You know, that's something that never 
was um, achievable for before for so many businesses just because they didn't have the scale and maybe people on staff to do it. But with Google Cloud, it becomes a lot easier and you're tapping into Google's infrastructure to do it. So not only can you overlay and visualize, you know, that proprietary data to uncover these new relationships um, as a partner who specializes in geographic information, we're here to help you make sense of those geographic relationships. You know, it's what we love doing. Um, and another feature here that I'd like to bring up is something called Google BigQuery, where we can um, detect patterns in your data and make predictions based on those patterns. You know, BigQuery removes the need for customers to manage their own data um, and the own data infrastructure. And uh, BigQuery GIS enables customers to analyze and visualize geospatial data without the need for that database administration part. Um, and it also has some built-in machine learning capabilities, which is very futuristic. So giving you an example of an application that AppGeo has built within this kind of Google Cloud and Google Maps ecosystem, it's something called Drive Texas, and this manages the highway uh, information system for the entire state of Texas. And they've had some pretty um, devastating storms there even in the past month. And this is a system that you know residents across the entire state of Texas are relying on to get that up-to-date information on the um, hundreds of thousands or millions of miles of roadway that are tracked within this system. So when you combine Google Cloud with Google Maps, you have this unprecedented level of scalability and reliability um, where this application has not crashed when it gets millions of hits during hurricanes, uh, these most recent ice storms, it stays online because it's mission critical. And so are the apps that you're developing for your business. So we're really proud of our Drive Texas implementation as an example of where we've built something really bulletproof and we're happy to do the same for you.